Good evening, everyone. I hope this video finds you great. I hope this video finds you well. I'm going to specifically talk about the portfolio, where we're at, and the milestones that we've hit today. So, briefly speaking, portfolio is up to around $350,000, of which $230,000 of it is in the dividend portfolio. And that, altogether, in the four 12 months, is going to yield me 902 Dollars. Now, I'm pretty excited about this. $900 is a pretty good goal. Uh, as everyone probably knows, if you follow the channel, next year's goal was to hit about $1,000 a month. So I'm only $98 a month away from that. Um, so in actuality, all I need to invest at this point is around another $25,000 to $30,000 in order to reach that uh, goal. So it looks like that goal needs to move upwards a little bit, and I'll probably do a video in the future describing that um, but at the time being this is where we're at and we're discussing $900 a month. Uh, you can see on the on the screen right now uh, the different ways that I evaluate the portfolio. On the very far left you can see the percentage breakdowns um, for each of the sectors and you can see the corresponding pie charts associated with that, whether it's dividends or portfolio value in the center and on the right side, respectively. At the very bottom of the screen, you can see the dividend yields by sector. So you can see if I have something invested, like, for example, materials, which is right here, uh, that is mostly my BHP investment. And so at the moment, that's yielding about 7.2%. And so that's what shows up. Whereas things like healthcare, that's generally splitting between Johnson & Johnson and my Abbey position. So those kind of offset each other and average around to about 4%. Now, the reason why I want to bring this one up is so that way we can look uh, pretty diligently at the portfolio. And for some reason, this is showing up a little strange. So let me fix this here, make sure that we're in the right. All right, we're good. So... At the moment, uh, we're looking at about $230,000 in the dividend portfolio. For some reason, I still have to figure out why I'm missing $237 here, but um, overall, we're getting pretty close. Uh, so the checks all in all are relatively good. It's less than you know 1% error, uh, just under 0.1% error here. Uh, so we have almost everything accounted for. I still have to do some due diligence and find out where that little error is, but overall, this is the automated spreadsheet. Um, basically, if anybody raises the dividend, it'll automatically update for me. Um, had that happen this morning when WP Carey raised the dividend a little bit last week, uh, just minorly uh, by less than a, a penny per share per quarter, but uh, ends up being about 0.6, I think, for the year. So that ended up showing up positively. And another portion that I've bought today, which pushed me over the $900 a month, is I put about $5,000, uh, that's a lie, around $6,000 or 47 shares of Johnson & Johnson. And the reason being is because I really like Johnson & Johnson. It's a really good long-term dividend holder. I was anticipating purchasing a utility stock uh, because if you look, uh, utilities is like a light red. You can see in the portfolio value piece it's around 1% of the portfolio, but uh, in terms of income, it's only 0.2%. Um, so relatively minor yield. So it's only like 0.5% of the total value of the portfolio, 0.2% the actual dividends coming from it. And so really wanted to get that up. And I was looking at companies like Southern Company, Duke Energy, um, a couple other utility stocks. So some of the water... Uh, stocks like this currently what I have this money in at the moment, which I think is like Aqua America. Uh, they're just overpriced at the moment, and I couldn't draw myself to paying for it. Um, and not to say that Johnson & Johnson is dead cheap or anything along those lines. It's just felt more comfortable to me. I already have a, a position established in Johnson & Johnson. It wasn't fully established. And, uh, you know, the utility companies over the past couple months have just been skyrocketing. So. I just couldn't draw myself to pull the trigger, although I do feel somewhat uneasy the fact that I have such a low amount in utilities, um, but that's neither, neither here nor there. 
So at the moment, relatively excited. Portfolio is up to around $10,800 in forward income for the next 12 months, $900 monthly. And that stacks up pretty well uh, against what I wanted to do this year. Uh, at the moment, I still am in transition between the two uh, workbooks, the automated one that you see here and the Excel one that I used to work off of. But I really like the way that I have this set up because you can see absolutely everything on the screen all in one area. Uh, whereas before I had to jump between, um, well, not jump between, but I generally had it more zoomed in. And so if I wanted to look at, say, dividends or the portfolio value, I had to scroll to the right. And that's not necessarily a problem, but I just took a little bit more time, organized this a lot better so that it's easier to view. Uh, one of the things that you can notice pretty pretty heavily is a lot of the stocks that I have, uh, generally speaking, the sectors pay over about 4% dividends, uh, and that is somewhat concerning to me uh, just based off the fact that uh, I would like to have the yield of the total portfolio kind of come down a little bit. You can see that it's currently sitting at around 4.7% uh, total yield which is a little high in my opinion. I'd like that to be in the 3% to 4% range, so the 3 in some change range. Um, but 4.7% is really high. Granted, a lot of the positions that I've purchased in the past couple months have been, you know, say Altria Group, uh, have been other companies that have had pretty high dividend yields, and unfortunately their share price continues to go down. Uh, Abbey is also included in that. Abbey is around 6% dividend yield, uh, I believe. Uh, and so uh, that also has helped contribute. I remember, I believe, late last year, earlier this year, we were in the low 4% range. And so uh, I know I've been concentrating on higher dividend paying stocks, uh, like partnerships like BPMP, Master Limited Partnership with P Pipelines and and so that has driven the cost, the dividend yield up uh, slightly. But um, I do feel comfortable with the majority of the stocks that I do have in the portfolio. Uh, there are some laggards, like uh, some companies that have cut the dividend, like Cedro Partners. But overall, um, dividend yield continues to go up. Capital continues to be added to the portfolio. And with that, I'm able to continue to purchase dividend-paying stocks. So... Um, at the moment, no changes really in strategy. Continue to invest uh, at the order of around four thousand dollars a month or so, uh, of which three or so thousand is going to be going to the dividend portion of the portfolio. Uh, and hopes with that uh, are that I continue to add around ninety to one hundred twenty dollars a month um, in dividend income yearly. So. Sorry, I probably didn't verbalize that well. With the three to four thousand dollars of additional income being added at four percent, that's probably anywhere between ninety dollars to one hundred sixty dollars in annual dividend income on a monthly basis. So every time I add three to four thousand, it's going to be ninety to one hundred sixty dollars of annual income that I will be getting from those purchases. One cool thing that I was talking about with a friend earlier is now that the portfolio is yielding around, let's just say $10,000 on average, um, just investing, say, reinvesting next year uh, at the 4.7% dividend yield, if I were to automatically reinvest all my dividends without any cuts or without any dividend growth, I would automatically be getting another $470 in dividend income just based off the fact that I have $10,000, you reinvest all that at 4.7% yield, and then that would give me another $470. So even without doing absolutely anything, just reinvesting the dividends, I get $470. But I also did calculations this past year of my 2019 dividend increases, and on average I yielded about, a, or I attained about an 8% dividend growth rate compared to 2018. So the stocks that increase the dividend, like Realty Income Corporation, Wells Fargo, um, what have you, at IBM, Philip Morris, all those, some of them went up 25%, some of them went up 0.6%, some of them actually cut the dividend. So, excuse me, on average, through all the share price or all the shares and total value that I have, I averaged it 
in for the portfolio is an 8% dividend increase just from that. So if you think that about that as well, off of $10,000, an 8% dividend increase would be $800. So thinking about it that way, if I continue on this path and get about, let's say, 6 to 8% uh, dividend growth next year, I'll be getting another six to $800 just in dividend raises that I can then add to the dividend reinvestment. So even without actually adding any capital to the portfolio, by the time 2021 comes around or the next 12 months roll around, I'll be looking at close to $12,000 in income without actually adding any capital to the portfolio. Now, of course, because I want to hit $12,000 in income in 2020, I'm going to have to add capital to the portfolio um, to try to accelerate that into 2020, uh, not just wait for an entire year's worth of time for compounding uh, growth rates and also reinvesting dividends. So anyway, really hope this video finds you well. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you guys is I'm planning on starting an investing WhatsApp group. Uh, so that way we can consistently talk to each other. Uh, I know that a lot of times what ends up happening is I make these videos or sometimes I do live streams and people ask questions that way. Uh, but I think one of the important things that we need to do is create more of a community. Uh, I, although I believe that we have a good one on YouTube here, I think that it might be even better for us to talk to each other during the day when we potentially make these uh, trades. Uh, I think generally speaking, what ends up happening is I'll make a video post it late at night like it is now, 9.18 Eastern Time, and then by the time people watch it, it's the next day or what have you. And so I end up on this cycle where I'm generally only responding to comments and things along those lines after working hours, which generally be about 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And what we could be doing actually is having this WhatsApp group and be talking to each other during the day, during trading hours, and potentially be providing each other uh, information that way. If you're interested, uh, please just DM me on Instagram, Matt Money, Matt underscore money one, and uh, just say, hey, I want to be part of the DM or the uh, WhatsApp group. We'll get that uh, in, and we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm planning on uh, just trying to get uh, about 15 or so of you uh, in there and and see how it really works out. Um, so obviously that's going to be free for you guys. And then depending on how I feel, um, I might create a second WhatsApp group or um, change it up a little bit. But obviously the first 15 of you, um, you know, you'll be my, my guinea pigs and really see how it goes. Uh, so really curious to see what ends up happening with respect to that. Um, but yeah, that's that's really it. As you guys can see on the screen here, dividends coming a lot from energy, financials, and real estate. Uh, and then healthcare is also getting a little bit bigger. Consumer staples is about 11% as well. Um, so really starting to even out the portfolio. Energy is still massively over um, over allocated to, but I'm comfortable with what it was because it was up around 40% at one point. So um I did almost buy some Exxon Mobil today because the price is around $71 and uh, the yield for Exxon is almost close to 5%, if not over 5%. And um, with the recent discoveries of having Guyana, it's, it's really difficult to, to not pull the trigger on that. But um, looks really good in a long-term cash flow standpoint. And I almost pulled the trigger on Shell as well uh, just because of their extreme positive cash flow and um, they're just a cash flow machine. And so... It's hard not to pull the trigger on companies with such large cash flow positions. Uh, but Johnson & Johnson is also in that camp, and so I didn't feel uncomfortable um, investing in another 47 shares in Johnson & Johnson, which, by the way, is good for another 175 or so dollars in uh, dividend income for the year, so uh, just over 15 or so bucks a month. Uh, added uh, in terms of dividend income, which which put me over this 902 here. It was like 990 or so, and then when you offset a little bit for for savings, uh, investment savings account, it went from like 1.9% to like 2.9%, so really only getting 0.9%, but that was able to push me over the $900 a month mark. So, All right, guys, I will talk to you guys soon. Make sure to message me on uh, Instagram if you want to be part of the WhatsApp group. 
And um, also, if you have any suggestions for videos, um, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys on the next video. Um, trying to think what it will be. I already have another one that I didn't release yet, um, but uh, but we'll see. Anyway, I will talk to you guys soon, and have a great evening.